<clears throat> Hi, everybody. It's Peter Schiff. It is Monday, August 23rd, 2010. You know, there was a lot of discussion, uh, I think, today on the financial channels regarding an article. I think it was in the New York Times um, about why we weren't going to have a recession because the yield curve is still positively sloped. The argument was that we, whenever we have a recession, it's preceded by a negatively sloping yield curve, which means short-term interest rates are higher than long-term interest rates. And the argument was that because we have a positive sloping yield curve, because long-term rates are much higher than short-term rates, that it must mean that there's not going to be a recession, that the economy is recovering, and the people who are looking for a double dip are wrong. Well, this whole argument is wrong. It's impossible to have a negative sloping yield curve when the Fed's got short-term rates at zero. I mean, how can long-term rates be lower than zero? That, that's not even possible. So the argument is, well, any government can avoid a recession by putting interest rates at zero. They can't. We have to look at what's actually happening. In the past, uh, the way recessions were brought on was we had these central banks that were creating the business cycle. They would try to stimulate the economy with cheap money and the result initially would be we'd get some pickup in, 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 uh, in expenditures. Uh, there might be some asset bubble inflated. Uh, so the GDP would rise. And then the secondary effect of the inflation would be that prices started to rise. Then the Fed would try to get out in front of the curve. They would aggressively raise interest rates. Maybe short-term rates would get up to 6 7 8%. They'd be higher than the long-term rates, wherever they were. And that would precipitate a recession. But that's not happening now. The Fed is at zero. And, of course, the Fed is not going to raise interest rates as inflation picks up because they can't. That's the box that they're in. So the Fed is going to keep interest rates at zero indefinitely. At some point, they're going to have to raise. But it doesn't mean that the fact that we have a positively sloping year curve, that there's not going to be a recession. If anything, the, the, the positive slope indicates inflation. The fact is that even though short-term rates are at zero, 30-year uh, bonds are not because people understand that these rates are not going to stay down this long. And of course, I still think that the bonds are, are not accurately pricing all the inflation that's out there. You know, there was an article also over the weekend about the huge inflows into the bond market. I mean, bond funds, bond mutual funds have taken on a tremendous amount of money in the last couple of years. I mean, uh, and, and now you've got most Americans buying bonds instead of buying stocks. They're making a major bet. And that's one of the reasons that bonds are so overpriced is because Americans who are now rebuilding their savings, which is what they need to do, unfortunately, they're lending their money to the government. Uh, so it's not growing the economy like it should be. We're not getting the benefit of those savings. They're not being invested in new capacity. Uh, they're not growing the economy and hiring people. The government is taking the money and spending it. But, you know, if you remember a decade ago, back in 2000, you had record inflows by individuals into the stock market, stock market mutual funds. And then the stock market had its worst decade in history following a rush by Americans to buy U.S. stocks. They're making the same mistake now with bonds. I think that this decade is going to be the worst performing decade in the history of bonds, despite the fact that you have Americans in record numbers putting their money into the bond market, they should be doing uh, something else with the money. So it's certainly not a positive indicator. But it, it shows you that Americans are saving more, but we're not getting the benefit of those savings. And not only isn't society getting the benefit, the investors, the savers are not going to get the benefit because the government's not going to pay them back, at least not in real purchasing power. You see, because the government is not investing this money productively, like a private corporation might if, you were, if Americans were loaning money to private companies, uh, the government's just spending the money. The only way it can pay off the interest and the principal is with future tax receipts. Well, that's not going to happen. Now, maybe the government would dramatically cut spending on Social Security or Medicare so it could pay off the bondholders, but they're not going to do that either. So all they're going to do is print money, which means the savings are going to get wiped out. So nobody benefits from this savings. Society doesn't benefit. The savers don't benefit. Just the government benefits now and the current recipients of government uh, transfer payments, like people who are getting Social Security payments or people who are getting um, their, their unemployment compensation. You know, also, when it comes to unemployment, I wanted to mention again, because we got so much uh, reaction to my video blogs on employment. You know, I did have an idea on how we can pay employment benefits to the unemployed if we're going to have government mandated 
unemployment benefits, and that's to have a lump sum, right? That's if you lose your job, you get a check right off the bat for the entire 20 weeks, and therefore you don't have a disincentive not to accept the job because you don't lose any benefits by accepting a job. You'll, you'll take a job that you get. Now, maybe if it's not the perfect job, you can keep looking for work while you're employed, but right now, uh, people are, are, are disincentivized from taking a job that is beneath them in their mind or doesn't pay enough because they've got something more lucrative in unemployment. But of course, why do we even need a government mandated unemployment uh, insurance? I mean, people buy life insurance. There's no government requirement that people buy life insurance, but people buy it who want it. There's no government requirement that you have uh, fire insurance. Uh, up until recently, there was no requirement that you have auto insurance. but most states that require automobile insurance, they only require liability. There are a lot of people that buy comprehensive in collision. There's no government law. Uh, it's certainly possible that without government mandated uninsurance benefits, that people would want to buy uninsurance uh, insurance. They could buy insurance in the event that they get they lose their job. The private sector could take care of that because you know when an employer pays uh, unemployment compensation uh, premiums to the government. That's money that they would have paid their employees. And instead of paying it to the employee in wages, uh, they simply send it to the government for unemployment insurance. Uh, they could easily pay that money to their employees and the employees could decide whether or not they want unemployment insurance. And of course, if we got it in the private sector, it'd be much more efficient because they would probably base the premiums on the risk. So let's say you're somebody who's had the same job for 10 years, or maybe you've had two or three jobs, but whenever you lose your job, you get a new job in a week or two. Uh, that person might be able to buy unemployment insurance for a very small premium. Whereas let's say somebody gets fired every, you know, every six months and whenever they lose their job, it takes forever to get a new job. That person might have to pay a much higher a premium to get insurance. And so you would have a much more efficient a system that provided incentives. And of course, a lot of people might decide not to have unemployment insurance at all, just to self-insure, which means having a savings account which means you don't spend all of your money. Maybe if your employer wasn't paying unemployment premiums for you every month, you could take that money and put it aside so that in the event that you lose your job, you have a store of savings to cushion the transition uh, between the job that you lost and the job that you found. We don't need the government coming in and, and mandating that. You know, one more thing I wanted to comment on as far as some of the, the comments I see online, you know, there are people that actually think that I want the dollar to fall. That's, you know, a, that's something that I think is desirable or that I'm actually making these video blogs because I have my clients in all these foreign stocks and I'm trying to get the dollar to go down uh, to benefit the positions that I have, which is completely absurd as if I even had that kind of clout. The reality is I don't want the dollar to fall. I would rather the government were pursuing policies that would encourage a sound dollar. I wish we had a budget surplus. I wish we had fewer regulations. I wish the government was cutting spending. I wish that we were doing things that were positive for the dollar. Unfortunately, we're not doing that. And so I have to make my investments not based on what I want to happen, but based on what I think is going to happen. And in fact, I am out here every day trying my best to influence government policy, not to benefit my book of business, but to hurt it. I mean, if the government actually did what I'm advocating, right, and strengthened the U.S. economy and strengthened the dollar, that would undermine my investment strategy at Euro Pacific Capital. The fact is, I'm trying to talk the government out of doing what I know is going to help my investment strategy. You know, I'm not, I don't have this as a strategy because I want, I want this outcome for the United States. It's because I fear this outcome. And so I'm trying to protect myself against what I think the government is going to do, not what I hope that they're going to do, even though I'm trying my best uh, to encourage them to adopt the right policies. And also, of course, if the dollar is going to collapse, better if lose value today rather than in the future, because what's happening, because we have all these artificial supports for the dollar, it's simply enabling America to spend more borrowed money, to go more deeper into debt, to have our economy uh, more out of balance, better remove those artificial props today and let the dollar go down now so we can put an end to this, so we can start restructuring our economy. Now, of course, in an ideal world, the dollar wouldn't have to go down at all because the government would do the right things to preserve its value. But of course, that isn't gonna happen. There's, so I have to invest based on what's going to happen, not what I hope is gonna happen. But of course, everything that I'm saying is, is trying to benefit the country. The problem is, I know nobody is gonna take my warnings uh, they're going to ignore them, and so I have to prepare for the worst. Anyway, thanks, everybody. Take care.